Hello! You know I've been champing at the bit to fill up this Fraser Price watercolour palette box and that is what I am going to do today. I am so excited. Let's get into it. So in case you didn't see it, I have already filmed an unboxing and first impressions video of this and you might want to check that out before I go into this one but I just thought I'd open it up again because it is so pretty and I just love it so much. So this is the outer box that it comes in and that in itself is a work of art and then when I open it it's probably going to make the light score funny because it's very shiny but here we have this incredibly beautiful brass watercolor palette so I will take it out I'm still not quite ready to get my fingerprints all over it so I'm going to use my white glove which is still on the desk I did not put it away from last time because I knew I was going to pull this out very quickly again but in here, I've already got my half pans in there. This came without the half pans. I've just stuck these in from my own stash. And there are 18 of them. And I'm going to move this very shiny box aside because it really does mess with the camera. <laughs> and we will play with this later once I've actually filled it up. So for now, I'm just going to focus on the half pans. They slide in and out really easily, which I've decided is a good thing because you can change your mind as to what paints you want to have in there so I can put in one lot of paints and then if I don't like it I can then take out the half pans and fill them with different half pans of paints I think that's a fantastic perk of this so which paints am I going to use today that's the important question I was originally intending to put Daniel Smith paints in here and I have quite a collection of those I was going to pick out 18 of them to fill up this palette with but I've decided I'm actually going to do a different thing for that and you will see in an upcoming video in the not too distant future what I have done with all of my Daniel Smith colors so don't forget to subscribe so you can view more of my videos and click that notification bell to let you know when my next videos come up I post twice a week yay <laughs> I was looking in my watercolor drawers to see what other paints I have and I came across these these are my Mary Blue watercolors and I will show you the ones that I had in there. I have 13 of them, which is a really strange number, I know. But I had this tiny palette. It was actually a makeup palette that I turned into a watercolor palette. And do you think I can find it anywhere? I have hunted high and low, but it has disappeared. I think it's in one of my old travel bags, but I just cannot find it at the moment. So I barely used these paints. I only squeezed out a tiny amount. The makeup palettes were maybe a quarter size, so a quarter half pan, something like that. So I've barely squeezed out any of these paints and I've only used them maybe once or twice before I ended up losing the set which is really brilliant but I have just this random assortment of memory blue colors now these are the old paints that they had these are in the older design they have since actually updated all of the colors and changed I think a lot of the formulas and also the packaging's completely different. These tubes are 15 mils and the new tubes are 12 mils, so they've actually downsized them. But would you believe they are also more expensive because I was thinking, well, maybe if I've got 13 of these, I could find another five of the new ones and put them into here. The price of them is just ridiculous. They were starting at $17 for a 12 mil tube, going up to 30, $31. And I was just going, oh, I really don't want to have to pay that much money for five more tubes so it was the art shop that was actually selling these ages ago when I bought them I'm, th I'm thinking I got these in 2019 possibly even 2018 and I was thinking there's no way that they have any more old stock but I went down there today just to have a bit of a look and see if there was anything left and then if they didn't have it I was then going to reassess what I was going to do with the colors and would you believe it they had a small basket left with some of the old tubes in. Now they are looking a bit battered, but they were 30% off their original price, and the original price I think was cheaper than what they currently cost. So they were quite reasonably priced. It ended up being about just over $40, which is a bit more reasonable than my calculations, which were anywhere between $85 and $130 or $150 just for five tubes. I was just thinking that is insane. They actually did not have that many colors left. And this is going to be a really interesting palette because I've managed to get 
colors like yellows, reds, and blues, but they may not necessarily be conventional yellows, reds, and blues. They're all just over the place, and it was just basically luck of the draw as to what they had in there and which ones I decided might look quite good. So these five here, I have absolutely no idea what they look like, other than looking briefly on the internet at some tiny little swatches and trying to just guess what the colors are going to be like. So let me put these in order and we'll see what we've actually got here. So I have three purples, although this one is more of a magenta color. I have two reds, three yellows, one Naples yellow reddish, which is like a Caucasian skin color. I've got three blues, three greens, and three browns. These are Italian paints. This is their professional line. The Venezia ones are their student line. I will just quickly read out the colors. So we have Verzino Violet, Garnet Lake, Permanent Violet Bluish, Crimson Lake, Cadmium Red Light, Indian Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Light, Naples Yellow Light, Naples Yellow Reddish, Ultramarine Light, Berlin Blue, not a clue what that one is, Prussian Blue, Permanent Green Light, Permanent Green Deep, Sap Green, Transparent Mars Brown, Transparent Mars Red, and Van Dyke Brown. So I'm going to pour them all out and then we'll swatch them and see how they actually look together as a palette. But I'm quite excited to use them. Going to let these dry for a while before I attempt to put them in here because you have to slide them in sideways I can see that some of this paint might get on those runners and just make a mess I really hope that Gandalf is not going to get in here and knock them all off my desk I might need to put them somewhere safe and just really quickly when I was in the shop I could not see any pigment details on here at all I could see the series number and I think that's possibly a light fast rating or it might be permanence and the white square which I think means transparent and then we've got a dark square here which means opaque but looking now that's it there it's tiny so they do have the numbers on them and I wish I'd seen that in the shop because then I would have been able to make a more educated guess as to what they are so anyway <laughs> too late now I've got them and I will write pigment numbers out when I do the swatches so we can see them together a couple of days later most of these paints are still really tacky especially that sap green which I've gone and put my finger in very cleverly <laughs> this Naples yellow light has dried into a crack already which is always the way with at least one paint I find in a set but the others all seem okay and they've settled in so they're not too full I'm just going to put them all in the box today anyway I can't wait anymore and I really want to get this video finished so once I've done that I will then swatch on onto this teeny tiny card that I've made that fits into this box. So I'm going to keep the swatch card just in here rather than in the palette itself. Then I will do a bigger swatch in my A4 sketchbook so we can actually see the pigment numbers as well because there's just really no room to write pigment numbers on here. There's barely enough room to write the names. I've put them in an order which I think will work but obviously it's not quite the conventional Roigibiv order so I'm going off the fact that there are three rows and so I'm also thinking of what they're going to look like going down as well as across and hopefully it won't look really bad otherwise I'm making a second card <laughs>
Okay, that's my first attempt. I think that is going to really bother me being there. I really want to move that to the end. I think the cadmium yellow needs to be next to the Indian yellow, then the Naples yellow light, then the Naples yellow red. The other ones I think I'm just going to leave as they are and I will just redo this really quickly <laughs> because it's just going to drive me nuts. I also have a little square of paper left so <laughs> that will fit on there quite nicely. Yes, I definitely like this one better. The Naples yellow red goes quite nicely with the Van Dyke brown. So this is the order that I'm going to stick with. Okay, I've ruled out another swatch chart. Oh, I've done so many of them today. <laughs> anyway, I've also put the pigment numbers. I will tell you the pigment names as I talk about them. But interestingly enough, only half of the colours are single pigments and the other half are multiple pigments. I think now with the updated range they've changed a lot of colors or added a new colors that are all single pigments so i think that's why they did the big overhaul i'm also just going to use this much larger water pot and a bigger brush to swatch these so starting out here with the first one which is crimson lake you can see that one runs quite a lot and it's a really bright red this one is an interesting mix of quinacridone magenta and pyrrole red as you can see those two pigments there and I had not picked the magenta, I had to look the numbers up. The next one is Cadmium Red Light, and PR108 is a cadmium colour. Cadmium Sulfoselenide, if you want to be a nerd about it, and you know I do. <laughs> when you see the two together, you can see how the Crimson Lake is much more to the pinker side. Now going into Indian Yellow, this is another one with two pigments. PY139, which is isoindoline yellow, and PY42, which is synthetic yellow iron oxide, and I noticed a few of them have that. Cadmium yellow light is again another cadmium color, PY35 is cadmium yellow, and that's a super bright one, I really like it. Next is the much paler Naples yellow light. Now this one has three pigments, it's a zinc oxide white, aralide yellow, and synthetic ye yellow iron oxide. Naples yellow reddish has titanium white synthetic yellow iron oxide and synthetic red oxide ah so many pigments in those two i really love the permanent violet bluish but that is clearly dioxazine purple and the pigment pv23 is indeed dioxazine violet i picked it straight away when i saw the color i didn't even need to see the pigment number for that it's such a distinctive one garnet lake also has some dioxazine violet in but it's mixed in with pv19 which is quinacridone violet so it is a more reddish version of it i just liked the look of the little swatch of it on the picture i saw so that's why i chose that one Verzino Violet PR122 is clearly quinacridone magenta. I don't know why they call it a violet when it's a magenta, but oh well, what do I know? <laughs> anyway, that PR122 was also present in the Crimson Lake, the first swatch I did. Going into Transparent Mars Red and Brown. Now these two are the exact same pigment, which is PR101, and that is a synthetic red iron oxide. But you'll see that the Mars Brown is a bit deeper of a color than the Mars Red and they're quite nice together although they're very similar when they dry and extremely transparent colors as the name would suggest but they're quite useful and I quite like those. Van Dyke Brown is a much darker one and that's got a mix of uh, PBR7 which is natural iron oxide and PBK9 which is ivory black a much darker brown and one I'm really glad I have because you can mix that brown in with some of the blues to get a nice grey or black sort of colour. Ultramarine light, standard PB29 and that is ultramarine pigment. I don't know what they do to make the difference between light and dark because I think dark is also the same. Berlin blue, PB15 colon 1, this is thalo blue leaning towards the red shade. This is a nice colour, although I really do prefer PB15 colon 3, which is a bit cooler. When Thalo Blue yellow shade, is it? Or green shade, I can never remember. <laughs> Going into Prussian Blue, this wasn't quite as dark as I would have thought, but it is definitely PB27, which is a Prussian Blue pigment. And moving on to the greens, the Permanent Green Deep, I don't mind. It's a mix of Thalo Green Blue shade, and that yellow is... 
Benza Medazzalone Yellow. Weirdly enough, Permanent Green Light is almost exactly the same, but it's got Thalo Green Yellow shade with the same Benza Medazzalone Yellow. I did not care for this one at all. I was really hoping Deep and Light were going to be a much bigger difference in shade, but unfortunately they're really close together, super annoying. And their sap green looks more like an olive green to me, with three pigments in this one. So here they are all dried. I'm liking the colours. I think they're really quite vibrant. A bit more vibrant than I was actually expecting. None of them really have much granulation. There's a tiny bit in the Van Dyke brown that I can see. Maybe a little in the ultramarine, but that's about it. They're pretty smooth otherwise. The thing I'm most disappointed about is that green. It is so similar to this one, and this one I had quite a lot of trouble getting it to re-wet, so if I change out any, it will be to get rid of the permanent green light and to put something else in. Preferably a darker green, because once again I have bright greens and not a nice dark green. But hopefully I'll be able to mix something out of the yellows and blues and greens that I've got, so I'll see how I go. Anyway, I'll do a painting over here. I've sketched out some autumn leaves but they were in these multiple colors it's kind of a fantasy picture got everything almost ready to go i'll just put in some of this water there we go that's a trouble that that is going to stick out so maybe i'll just put it like that <laughs> and i will get a couple of my actual travel brushes that i have so i'm going to use these get some painting going, use these mixing trays, and I will see how this palette goes. Let's get into it. I tried to keep my brush strokes quite loose in this, and I painted all of the leaves in different colors. If you see the reference image, which I hope to remember to put in the description below, you will see that they are more rainbow colored than what I would normally expect autumn leaves to be, but it was just a really good chance to mix in different colours together, both on the palette and also on the paper itself, just blending in a few of the different colours using wet on wet technique and just dropping the paints on so that they merge together. That was really fun, and I find if you do it that way, you have much less chance of the colours turning into mud than if you try to mix certain colours on the palette. So I just did a combination of both. I found that the palette itself was really useful and there was enough space for me to do my little mixes over there. I did not run out of space at any time during this painting. I was obviously using a fairly small brush though. So I mean, if you had a really big brush, you would use those mixing wells pretty quickly. But if you're somewhere with just a small setup and a small sketchbook, then this palette is actually really useful for that. The only problem is, is it's very heavy, so I would really want to put the box on a table. I would not want to hold it in my hand, although you can do, but yeah, it's just super awkward. And because I'm also scared of dropping it on the ground and making a huge dent in that beautiful brass, I would be a lot more cautious taking it outside. I'd prefer to be somewhere where I've got a nice table to rest it on. Now I'm going into the background, painting around the leaves that I put in. And I just randomly picked colours for this. I was dropping them in, trying to get more of a darker background to make the leaves stand out. I don't know how successful I was, but it ends up being a very bright rainbow picture and I ended up really liking it. Just the colours were so vibrant and I have to give it to the Mamory Blue paints that almost all of them were really great, except for the permanent green light which just did not want to re-wet and is most definitely my least favorite in this palette. Otherwise, all of the other colors were really great. And together they make a rather eclectic, but actually quite useful palette of colors.
Okay, I think I'm finished. <laughs> it's always hard to know when to finish something, but I'm just going to call it done for now. And I'm overall really happy with the memory blue colours that I have in this palette, except for that permanent green light, it is just not working. It's gone gluggy and I don't know how to fix that, so I might just pull the whole pan out and stick something else in there. I do have another Viridian colour, I think it's by Mission Gold, it's a sample one, so if I can find that I might swap out the permanent green light for that one. So my palette is finally dirty and I can live with that, it, it's actually a lot easier to handle it now that there's paint and things on it before I was a bit too scared to touch it because it was just so shiny and clean and now that it's been marred with paints and everything it's a lot easier to pick it up and move it around and things and you could see this pot has gone pretty dirty both sides are now really dirty the rinse water stayed quite clean for a long time but after a while I just kept forgetting and sticking it in the wrong ones after a while I just got sick of it and ended up using my large water container which I also have just here and you can see that that one's quite dirty too so this is useful in a limited way for small paintings I think if you've got an A5 book or anything smaller like that then this set is a lot better for that but doing a painting on an A4 size it takes up quite a lot more paint and therefore a lot more water the paints there are plenty of them so the painting side is not such a problem it's just the cleaning of the brush that is an issue but in a pinch I mean it's designed to be a travel water color palette so you know you're not supposed to be able to paint gigantic things with a small pot of water and I would just recommend bringing a separate pot as well maybe one of those collapsible ones because those are always easy to carry anyway I will probably clean this after I've filmed this video just to take off some of the paints and things like that and that's about all I've got for this brass palette at the moment okay well I hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think about the paints that I ended up choosing and I will see you again really soon with another video I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there I'll swatch you later bye